We've just arrived at number four Liberty Grove Court. This is the outside of the neighborhood. You can take a look at the homes in the neighborhood. It's a cute little cul-de-sac. And this house does fall on the first uh, entry part of the cul-de-sac. There's one other house here at the entry of Tesson Street. This is the second house of the cul-de-sac. And as you can see, it's a cute little cul-de-sac. All right, let's take a look inside. I'm getting, this is Liberty Grove. All right, so when we come into the entry foyer, <clears throat> got great light as soon as you access. Okay. Fixtures are older, but still in good condition. Minor change out. We've got a ceiling fan, and then this is the living room area with the fireplace. Fireplace is wood burning. This is to the bedrooms. So we'll go down there shortly. This is an atrium ranch. All right, and the kitchen. Let's take a look. Again, great light that comes in from the back of the atrium ranch. This is the kitchen. Original cabinets, they have hardware on them. White appliances. This door is to the garage. We'll look out here. It's a two car garage. Got a vacuum system, central vacuum. Very clean, very dry. This is a bonus area, which is the laundry room right outside of the kitchen. Off the garage. So you've got main floor laundry, not down in the lower level. So again, all white appliances, it's original to the home. All right, and this is the kitchen and here we go to the pantry. This home is vacant. And this is to the lower level. We'll go down there next. This will be your dining. The backyard. We'll go out here really quickly. Wasp nest up there. It doesn't look like anything's in it, so not really posing a threat to me. So, where that water spout stops, this would be the extent of the land, the backyard. I'm not sure if that shed belongs to, uh, well, actually, that shed belongs to this house. So, where that line is right here in the yard, that's where this property would probably end. Again, this is an atrium ranch. All right, we come back in. We got a lot of really good light though that comes off of the back of this house. Um, let's get this door locked back up. And this is standing back at the door, dining, kitchen, living room, lower level. All right, let's go check out the bedrooms. Don't mind me. Coat closet. This is the first bathroom. That's the floor, not me, just the floor. Toilets are a little low, so you probably wanna update the toilets. And then we've got a room here. Decent size room. You certainly could do a full-size bed in here without it being crowded. You do a king, you'll be losing a lot. I mean, a queen, you'll be losing some space. This is a good size room. You could certainly do a queen-size bed in here without feeling like you have uh, compromised on the space. Walk-in closet. And then we've got the master right across the hall. 
Got a linen closet here in the hall. And again, back toward the kitchen and the living room. Double doors for the master. Master closet or owner suite. You can certainly do a king size bed in here without an issue. Tons of space, good space. And then we walk into the, it looked bigger on pictures. It definitely looked a lot wider on pictures. So again, this is right off the bedroom. You've got a uh, jet tub, jacuzzi jet tub. Window, double sink with vanity, the shower, hidden water closet. Toilet's again are kind of low, but it's okay. So it looked a little larger. This bathroom looked a little larger on um, on the actual pictures, but it's a good it's a good bathroom, good size bathroom and um, everything. All right, and then we have. Oh, we've already looked in that closet. Okay. So now we'll just go ahead and head downstairs. Take a look at the lower level. Oh, get myself up out of here soon. All right. Again, this is an atrium ranch, so you got a lot of natural light that comes down. This is just a good little, uh, backyard, the walkout. It smells like they had a dog at one point. Okay. And let's walk in. Any of these lights turn on in here? Nope. So we have a partially finished lower level. The main um, parts of the home, the big space of the home is open um, to finish off if you choose to. But this is what is actually finished out here. So you've got a full bathroom and you've got a bedroom. Good size bedroom. Um, it's the si same size pretty much as uh, the one second bedroom upstairs, not the master, but the second one that we saw. And there is also a walkout closet. And because there's a walkout here, this is truly a um, bedroom classified by our municipality because you have this walkout access for in the event of a fire, so there's no need for an egress window in that room. Let's see there. But do they have one? Yes, there is a, a room, a door, sorry, window large enough for an adult to climb out in the event of an emergency or a fire or something that obstructs this exit. Okay. And then this is the guts of the house. They've had some updates to the plumbing here. The, um, PVC, they've got fire flashing around it as they should. You've got an updated hot water heater, which means that this hot water heater was put in uh, around or after two, uh, 2017 because new code states that they have to have an expansion tank. So you've got this big open area, kind of like a blank canvas to do anything. This for the central vacuum. I don't see any water intrusion. There is a salt pit here, no pump, but there is an electrical outlet in the event that you wanted to add a salt pump here. Now, concerns that I see, being that the rest of the home is finished, we're looking at this big crack that has been filled uh, probably by the crack team, um, and they have obviously fixed or repaired that. You've got this rebar that there's recently been some repairs too, you could see because of the cement looking a uh, different color. So they've had some type of repair to that rebar, maybe to make sure things were structurally sound or there might've been some movement shifting or cracking in that area. And then when we look here, this concerns me because you don't see it on any of the other walls outside of where they've repaired, but here you've got a lot of, um, water intrusion that you can see that comes in and trickles down the wall. And so I would 
I wonder if there's some sort of a, maybe termite damage or something, or maybe the seal plate and band board has some damage. Also, in looking here, when you see that this has been pulled out, you also see the rotting here. You got some wood that is um, certainly being impacted by moisture. And I don't, don't know exactly, I think this is facing the front of the home, but that's being impacted by some sort of moisture. Um, as you can see, that would all have to be taken out. And without removing this insulation here, I can't see what's happening, but I would assume it would be similar to this because that it has to trickle over here. Yeah. But again, this is all water intrusion, you know, and I would be concerned with where it's coming from. And as I step back, there we go. So um, let's see here. This is facing the front of the house. So I'll take a peek upstairs to see if I can figure out exactly where that area is. It's definitely the front of the house. Oh, they would need to put some fire flashing right in there. You probably don't see that, but right in there, there needs to be fire flashing. That's to prevent fire from going up and breathing and, and breathing and going upstairs very quickly. All right, so then this is another side of the home that again, I don't know why this door is here blocking off all this space when it really could have been finished off. The bedroom is on the other side of that wall. Oh, the stairs are, okay. And there's a 200 amp panel here with a lot of space in it. Oh yeah, the bedroom is down the hall the other way. So this could actually have been a room too because there's a window that would allow this to be a bedroom should this room have gotten closed off for any reason. Certainly could have been a bedroom. Um, oh, they have a radon mitigation system here, as you can see. But what I don't see, usually when there's a radon mitigation system, there are these little things that look like mercury and it goes up like this. And whenever that is leveled, then you certainly need to contact them because that's how you know that it's running properly. I could hear the fan, but I don't see what we should see. There should be a little, uh, like a thermal gauge. Let me look on the side of the wall. No, it's not there, which is really odd to have a radon flow, but not be able to make sure that it's operating appropriately so that's it you know um i don't think i showed you the furnace but the furnace is newer it's you know this is not an old community so it's not you know old systems in here this is a newer system and um systems aren't our issue you know in this property oh this expansion tank when it was put in it was it's not strapped oh wait let's see Oh, they got smart. Okay, so they have it strapped up there. And actually, it's not a strap. It's just a, a screw system that keeps it properly in place. We're used to seeing little straps, but I like that as well. Everything looks good on that, but this is a concern for me. It's probably why we're still sitting where we are market-wise. I don't know. I'm just the messenger. Well, thank you so much for um, journeying, coming through this uh walk through with me we've seen the home and uh all of what it offers and it's exciting because someone will get this home and it may be you thanks again